Hey guys, so I'm in my fiber studio today since I have it all set up. I figured I might as well enjoy it. So what I'm going to do today is I have... Fleeces that are washed, but they need to be processed. So... What I'm going to do, or what I've started to do, is I've been flicking them open and running them through my drum carter. Um, I'm just using the manual one because the 72 TPI works better for opening up locks. So this is Lulu, who is a Romney Polwerk blend, and she has these beautiful tonal grays all through her fleece. Um, I'm just going to tip you down and show you the setup here. So basically, I took a hand card and I've just climbed it to my table. So then what I do is I take a lock and I just flick it open a little bit before I throw it on. Now, Lula is a fairly open crimped fleece as opposed to, say, a BFL. So I'm probably going to skip this part. But if it's a really tight curl, I would flick it first before putting it through the drum cart. But like I said, Lulu's fairly open, so I'm just going to hand pick it open and run it through my drum carter. Now, if you want, you can hand pick before you're even at your drum carter. I often find in the evenings when I'm sitting watching TV, I'll sit and pick a fleece. And I mean, literally picking, all you're doing is just opening up the locks. See, opening the locks. And there's a little second cut in there. So I'll pull that out. And if you see any big bits of veggie matter, you can get them out. The other advantage to doing a hand pick first is a lot of the debris will fall out. Because once you cart it, it's in there. It's not coming out. All right, so there we go. We got her picked open pretty good there. I mean, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because then what's the purpose of using a drum carter, right? All right, so then we just put a light layer on. Yep, let's adjust you again so you can see what's happening. Here we go. We just put a light layer on the feeder in. And then turn. Sounds like my drum cart needs to be adjusted. You can hear the tines are actually hitting each other. And with this one, they should just miss. So in my toolbox, I have a screwdriver and an old rewards card. So this should fit between the teeth. You can see that it's being jammed up. Now I don't know how most drum carters are. I just know how to adjust my brother. So you just loosen up these bolts. Oh, that's why it moved. It's because those are loose. And then you can just... This side can be a little trickier because that's where the belt is. All right. And just let it rest against the card for a minute. Get it tightened up a bit. Not all the way, just a little bit. Then make your fine adjustment. No, it's still too tight. There we go. So it'll fit in there easily. And just tighten it down. But since my screws were loose, I'm just going to check them all. I haven't used it in a while, so it doesn't surprise me. It's been moved around and shifted and shuffled and moved here and there now that it has a home. All right, now we're going to do this side. There we go. And then just tighten the screws.
him a bit. Some turn, hold those for some other time, and let's get back to carding. So we'll put a thin layer on there. Oh, much better. And then you can see that it does indeed still grab the fiber, even though those tines aren't touching. And as you feed it on, every once in a while, I'm going to burnish it. This sounds hideous, but it's actually how you do it, and it's fun, trust me. And that just tamps it all down so you can get more on. So I'm going to keep picking and carding. I will do a time lapse and I'll come back when it, we're ready to take it off the drum when we have a full bat and we'll have a look at that. All right, so you can see that we've got the drum carter loaded up. You can see here where the break is, that the fiber is all nice and squishy on there. And you can see the debris that fell out just from picking the fleece. Trust me, my pants were not that dirty when I started. So this is why I recommend picking before carding because this debris would all just land in the carter. And don't worry, I have a little robot back to do a cleanup when I'm done. All right, so I'll put you back on the tripod and we will uh, take the bat off. So here's our bat. We need a doffing tool. If you don't have one of these, I recommend one of these. You can see I've been using this knitting needle for a while and I kind of bent the snot out of it. But hey, it works. So, find where your carding cloth is attached and then just break your fiber. If it's really hard, then just take a little bit at a time. It can get hard on your knuckles. They do make a knuckle saving doffer. Oh. <laughs> Good thing there was no one standing over there. I've never done that before. They do make a knuckle saving doffer. Um, I can't remember which company makes it, but it's probably a good idea. I should probably get one at some point. Keep working your way across, breaking the bat. Some people cut their bats. I don't, but I suppose you could. No reason not to. Well, unless you're one of those, never cut your fiber people, which, you know, I can see. I will cut my fiber for the right reasons, but this works just as well. All right, so we got our bats all broke. I'm just going to pull it down. I can twist and get a good grip. And then we'll pull while we reverse the drum. If you have a motorized carter, use the motor or disconnect your drum from your motor before you do this. Because otherwise you'll strip your gears you don't have to be that picky I always get so fussy about getting all the fiber off it doesn't really matter it's just a thing with me I like to have a nice clean drum when I'm done this one is not going to be, but still. There we go. 
So this is our bat after just picking it open and running it through the drum carter once. So you can see that it's, oh, there's a piece of edge matter. I'm going to get out of there. You can see that it's starting to align nicely. It's fluffy. There are naps in here, but those are from the few second cuts that I missed. There's one there. So now what I think I'm going to do, now that I have it done, opened up on the 72 TPI, I think I'm going to take it over to my motorized drum carter and I'm going to run it for a pass through that. So I'll take you across the room and we'll do that. So this is my brother motorized drum carter and it is very side heavy because the motors are mounted on the side. So what I've done is I took some anti-tip over furniture um, what do you call that stuff? Hardware. And I've actually strapped the drum carter to the wall. Now these are just tie straps, so if I need to take the drum carter off, it's a simple matter of snip this, then just replace it with a new tie strap. And I believe this is one, I can't remember, one something on the TPI. And there's the other side there. So now my drum carter can't tip over. Now if you look here, you can see where my kitty cats knocked it over in its previous home and bent some of the tines. Um, I will fix that one of these days, just not today. And I was also carting some colored stuff, so I'm going to give it a quick clean before I put this through, and then we'll do a video on... That was Bobble knocking over stuff, and we'll do a video on using this one. And we're ready to go. So it has two motors, one for the drum, one for the liquor in. Make sure they're both in forward. Make sure they're both on. Then we have the, I think they call it a rail stat. It's the speed control. Um, I've been having a lot of trouble adjusting the drum speed to the liquor in speed. Everything I found said that the drum should do about five revolutions per one revolution of the liquor in drum. Then I saw a video on the Pat Green Carter and those are designed that the drum always runs at full speed and then you just adjust the speed of the liquor in a little bit until you get what you want. Um, brother Drum Carters uh, bought out Pat Green and I don't know if this one is designed the same way but I've decided I'm going to try turning up the speed of the drum higher than I normally would and see what happens. I mean, why not? So I've just adjusted my brush to be fairly firm, locked it into position. So now I'm going to take my drum and I'm going to crank it up. Not quite to full speed. And I'll get my liquor in moving. All right, now here's my bat. I'm just gonna rip off a strip, fluff it out, and feed it on. And let's see what happens. Holy, just sucked it in. All right, that was quick. Let's try another strip. Spread it out a bit. And let's see what happens. All right, so if I just kind of rest my hand on it, I'm not really applying pressure, I'm just sort of resting the weight of my hand on the fiber to keep it from just whoop, up onto the big drum. Now this drum is 
maybe three times the size of my little drum carter. Two anyways. So it's not going to hold as much. It's going to have like less fiber on the drum when we're done. But we'll give it a go anyway. I think we need to increase the speed of our liquor in a little bit. Just don't want to overfeed it. And we have one little piece left. Like the liquor in is acting here, so we may have to look into that. I'm just going to give it a burnishing. So now we're going to slowly stop our drums. You don't want to just jam it to stop. If you did that to your car, your engine would explode. So you want to kind of treat this the same way. Now I'm just going to shut off the liquor in because we don't currently need it. Flip that backwards. Now we need a doffing tool and we'll go to this side. We're going to reverse our drum. Come over a little bit more to the set here. All right, so we'll click our drum into reverse and very slowly bring it around until we find our break in our curtain claw. There it is, right there. Bring it up to where we can work on it. down yeah because it's motorized I don't want to just pull off the wheel so I just turn it in reverse Ooh. Ooh, it's jammed on something hmm. like I said I'm not very good with this thing yet I need some more practice all right there we go so here's the bat after going through the finer carter and it's uh i would call that done i would spin from that easy peasy it's actually quite lovely oh there's another little bit of edgy matter i'm just going to pluck that out while i see it it's quite aligned and this fiber is very fluffy and soft now there are a few here you can put it up to the light there's some nets and noils in there, but you're going to get those if you card your fleece regardless. You can pick them out or just leave them in for character in your yarn. I usually just leave them in. 
So I will just fold this in half and then I just keep twisting and I make a little nest. And there we go, carded fiber. So I'm gonna keep poking away at my fiber. Thanks for joining me today. If you wanna see more crazy fiber adventures, feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna keep trying to figure this bad boy out. He's not gonna defeat me. He's not gonna do it. No, 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 no. I'm gonna get him working the way I need him to work so I can process my fibers much faster. Didn't spend all that money on a drum carter to not use it. So I've got to stop procrastinating and use it. And that's it for today. So I shall see you later. Bye guys.